Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036359, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Father and our God, it is a great privilege for us to come and for us to be instruments in your hand. We thank you, God, that no matter the challenges in the healthcare sector, we know that you are on top of it. And particularly when the entire world has come under a very serious panic and much more pressure upon all the systems that people have put together. And we saw that men are helpless unless you will rise up for us. We ask, Lord, that you will sharpen us until we become effective instruments in the discharge of the body of dealing with the health of people all over the land. And where your people have gathered in different parts, please undertake for all of them. Where, oh God, we are still, some are still traveling to come and join us. Please, Lord, bring them safely and establish your counsel in each one of us. And there are some of us that are gathered and we look very few in our country and it's as if what can the feeble number of us do? But we do remember, oh God, that it was only four lepers that encountered you and the story of Syria changed. And what will have brought a complete collapse was turned around overnight. We ask, Lord, that it will please you to walk with us, to walk in our lives, and to bring about a divine transformation onto the health care sector in our different lands. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. So let me quickly request that you now follow me to turn to the book of Jeremiah chapter 51. That's where our text for this summit had been taken. And by the grace of God, we'll be uh, looking at it at various points in various angles and with whatever God will have us do. But it is very touching that we're going to read that verse 19. The portion of Jacob is not like them. For he is the former of all things. And Israel is the Lord of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms, and with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With thee also 
will I break in pieces, man and woman. And with thee will I break in pieces, old and young. And with thee will I break in pieces, the young man and the maid. I will also break in pieces with you, the shepherd and his flock. And with thee will I break in pieces, the husband man and his yoke of oxen. And with thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers. May the Lord bless his word even as we look at it as briefly as we can while we uh, take our bearing in the course of this summit in the name of Jesus Christ. Now you will see some repeated words in that passage and that uh, is what defines the context of what we are looking forward for God to do with our lives first and foremost it is very interesting for me to note that some things were repeatedly, repeatedly expressed from that verse, from verse 19 down to verse 23. Now, I want you to note two things quickly. First is the very, very clear, very definite, and very intentional use of, I want you to look at that. He said, Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with you will I break in pieces the nations, and with you will I destroy kingdoms. Permit me to quickly reset issues before we go ahead. Do you notice that he is not asking you to go and break in pieces the nations? Did you notice that? Did you notice that God is taking responsibility for what he is about to do. God is about to do something in our time. God is about to move in our time. God is about to manifest a divine purpose that he had proposed in his heart in our day. God is determined to walk and do his own strange work in our day. So I want you to quickly highlight the kind of things that God wants to do before we start looking at how he intends to do it and what he intends to use. He said, I will break in pieces the nations. I will break in pieces the nations. I will destroy kingdoms. I will break in pieces the horse and his rider. I will break in pieces the chariot and his rider. I will break in pieces man and woman. I will break in pieces old and young. I will break in pieces the young man and the maid. I will also break in pieces the shepherd and his flock. I will break in pieces the husband man and his yoke of oxen. 
I will break in pieces captains and rulers. You will notice that all I have just done was to bring out all the various things that we are hearing God declare that he wants to do. And the way he wants to do it, I want you to again repeat that word with me so that I can bring out the issues again. You are my battle axe and weapons of war. Does that talk about negotiation? Huh? Does that speak about begging? Does that speak about about dialogue? I want you to note that there's something that is requiring confrontation. It's requiring a force of action. It's requiring a subduing. It's requiring yes, it is requiring an aggressiveness in order for the purpose of God to be established. So the first thing I saw is that there is a war. There is a battle that God is rising to fight. There is a matter that God is rising at this critical time to confront in our generation and particularly in the health care sector of our generation. I'm hoping that as we go ahead, several of you will be able to articulate all that has become a threat unto the purpose of God over the lives of mankind. There are several sectors that even if something is going wrong there, it is manageable. It can be contained. But not in the health care sector where anything that goes wrong, people are liable to end their lives abruptly in eternity. And the challenge is that every other damage that may take place in any other sector, they are repairable. But whatever damage that comes to human lives in this particular sector is colossal, is eternal, many times it is irreversible, and the result of it is hell. And if the enemy of God, the adversary, the one that is looking for whom to kill, what to steal, and what to destroy. The one that is roaming about and, and prowling and roaring like a lion, like a hungry lion seeking whom to devour. Why, brothers and sisters, the challenge, yes, of corruption, either in business or in uh, civil development or politics, why they are terrible enough. I want to tell you that all the damages there, they are limited to the earth. And people can survive it. 
people can adjust and still continue. But when the matter comes to the earth sector, lives of men, life that you cannot buy in the market, life that you cannot reconstruct, life that you cannot replace is at a risk. So whatever battle comes to the gate of the earth sector, we cannot treat it as casual. We cannot keep quiet. And I'm hearing God wanting to arise. Arise as the man of war. Arise as Jehovah Sabaoth to confront and to bring unto proper positioning the matter of the earth sector. There are a few things that runs in my mind whenever I look at whatever happens to the earth sector and how we cannot sit around it and begin to discuss it as we are just discussing uh, properties, as we are discussing uh, construction of a stadium or we are talking about uh, all of the things that we could be talking about when it comes to health. It's a do or die matter. Am I communicating? Now, I have got some few cases in scripture when Pharaoh thought of how to finish the growth of the children of Israel in Egypt. When he thought of everything he could have done to subjugate them, he had put them under very hard labor. Isn't it? He had placed them under terrible labor of hard task as if to break their will but these people are still multiplying. And he had to sit down and said, who can I engage to bring this matter to a conclusion? Excuse me, where did he apply to? To whom did he apply? He went to the earth sector. He appealed to the midwives. And he said, what I want you to do, it is at the bad stool, at the point of delivery, as the midwives are catching the baby, when the pregnant woman is completely helpless, when she's in between life and death, when everything is at its critical point, when if anything goes wrong, it has gone wrong. The king of Egypt went and engaged and said, that's where I wanted to do the job for me. And he knew that whatever they did at that point was irreversible. Can I find out? You have been in this service. When a midwife makes a mistake at the delivery of a child, those kind of careless and costly mistake, what does he do to the baby? Do you know that it can just lead to a lifelong deformity? That child may never balance at all. 
There was a child that was born to be a king. He was born. His father was highly favored by God, Jonathan. And the only son that Jonathan was having that would have inherited him. Do you remember when this baby was born? And the, the Bible talked about the nurse that was to take care of that child. They said there was something somewhere, maybe there's a trepidation of fear, and they were running. And this baby was dropped mistakenly. You use the word fair, it's all right. We're being modest. But this child was mistakenly dropped and mishandled. And we are told that it's two limbs. Eh? So I don't know whether that was a spinal injury that finished everything here down. It was not that he just had a small fracture. When we come to medical discussions, you'll be looking at possibilities. But you see, that child, could he rise up to become anything? Because the battle that he could not win was the battle at the health sector. Unfortunately, when the time came and David was saying, who can I that I need to do something good to the house of Saul? Does anybody remain in the house of Saul that I may do something good for him? Particularly my friend Jonathan. And they were scratching everywhere only to bring out this man who was lame in his two legs. A prince, an heir apparent, but damaged by the head worker. Unfortunately, they were carrying him like this. He was to be given a whole estate. But no matter what he had, he could never access it. And all that we were told was that there was a servant that was carrying him up and down. Whatever money they gave, it was the servant that ate it. Now so... There are damages that are irretrievable and there is none. There is none like those damages that occurs in this sector. There are souls that they come to us when they are about to enter into life or when they are about to exit. So if Satan is going to fight, you can be sure that the health care delivery is his interest because he's looking for how many to take to hell, how many to damage permanently. 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 And yet, if there's any other place we are men that have been energetic over the years and they are not ready to listen to the gospel. No matter what you tell them, they are so busy. If there is any other place where they are totally vulnerable and they can be given a chance to hear the word of God, it is in this place. Did you see why the health care sector Eh? is a battleground. 
is a battleground not just for the neglect of leaders and uh, politicians. That's not what we are even talking about. It's a battleground because that's where souls are either damaged or salvaged. That's where souls are either destroyed or that's where they are helped. But what is touching me is the tone in which God was speaking. As if the Jehovah Sabbath, the man of war, is arising to wage war. To wage war. And as we welcome you into this particular summit, I wish for you to recognize that it's a battle cry. I wish for you to know that God is speaking. Something is coming and heaven is about to arise to respond. I would have loved just to describe all that God said he will do and ask you to pray. But there's another word that is very important and they are also recurrent. Let me remind you the first that we have dealt with. What is the first that we have dealt with? The I will, I will, I will, I will. Have you noticed that? I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. The determinate willingness of God to act. The intentional commitment of God to wage a war in repositioning the healthcare sector. Because if millions are going to go to hell and mass, this is a place where the enemy is going to do his maximum exploitation. I will, I will, I will, I will. That assures me that God is about to do something. But then there's a second repeated phrase that is very, very, also very important and I just want to refer to it before I withdraw this charge to a conclusion tonight. Yes. He said, all of you look at it now. He said, you will see the word with thee. Can you all please look through? Are you seeing it? Can you see it, brothers and sisters, wherever you are? I just want to check your Bible now. He said, for with you, with you will I break in pieces the nations and with you will I destroy kingdoms and with you will I break in pieces the horse and his rider and with you will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider with you also will I break in pieces man and woman and with you will I break in pieces old and young and with you will I break in pieces the young man and the maid I will also break in pieces with you, the shepherd and his flock, and with you will I break in pieces the husband man and his yoke of oxen, and with you will I break in pieces captains and rulers. All of you, did you read that scripture with me? Are you reading the scripture? Eh? Let me ask you, what, what, which of the things that God said I will do, I will do, that did not proceed with those two words? With you, with you, with you, with you, with you. Did you see anything, anything that God said he will do and there was nothing like with you there? Is there anything like that? Oh my God, is there anything like that? So what is the matter there now? It meant then that why God is eternally 
intentionally willing to go to battle against his enemy, against the adversary, there was another matter that we cannot ignore. What is that matter? With you, the human component. Your own component as God's instrument, as God's weapon. So, wait with me quickly. So, what can God do without you in this passage? Can I hear your answer? Eh? Nothing. Nothing. So, the willingness of God the intentional determinate counsel of God the power of God to do anything and everything has now become bound limited because he has decided that whatever he wanted to do he must do it with you so Two issues that I wanted to meditate upon as we go on with this meeting is now if God has no limitation if God's power is elaborate and is sufficient and nothing can withstand him when he wants to walk if God can overrun any system at any time in any nation in any place and we know that God is the God of all flesh, nothing is impossible to him. But now, where is the limitation? Where is the limitation? Where is the narrowness? Where is the entrance? Where is the slowness? Of what God could have done. Excuse me, where is it? Where is it? With the vessels. Because God determined, with you, I will walk. With you, I will break in pieces nations. With you, with you, with you, with you, with you. What will be your response to that? In the course of this summit, what will be your response to what heaven wants to do? But he wants to do it with you. Now, let me now take what will be the response? What is the last aspect? As I'm looking at that passage, you know, I'm not dealing with all the inside details. I'm only looking at all that that scripture is talking about because of this repetitive use. I will, I will, I will, I will. I wish God, I just say, I will break in pieces the chariots and his rider. I will break in pieces. I will destroy kingdom. I will do this. You know what I would have just said we should do tonight to say I will be done oh Lord Thy will be done Thy will be done Thy will be done But because God has added a clause with you with you with you you might look insignificant by yourself but as far as God is concerned heaven is focusing on you because without you all the I will I will I will that God has spoken about may not take place And 
believe God is going to move and he has committed himself that it will, it will be done with you. Then what manner of persons we ought to be? What kind of men and women, what kind of head workers, head professionals must we be in repositioning the health system in our time, in our nations, and in our situation. That is where this meeting is becoming critical. And if I were to ask in a very simple way, this would be the only reason why God is asking us to gather the health workers. If God can do what he wants to do without you, then he could have done it even without you. Then he could have done it and there would have been no need to call you together and to be speaking to you about God wants to do something. If it is possible for God just to move like that without the instrumentality of yourself whom he has positioned in the earth sector, then I would have said this meeting itself would not have been needed, not have been necessary. But because God said, with you, with you, with you, with you, with you. So what will be our response? Now, I want all of you to return to that verse 19 and verse 20. The portion of Jacob is not like them. For he is the former of all things. And Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. And look at what God said. Thou art my battle axe and you are my weapons of war. It was touching me that I'm hearing God saying, my battle axes are not iron. They are not metal. They are men and women. If God is going to take the battle to the gates, he is not going to look for machine guns. He's not looking for equipment made of lifeless things. If God is going to go to battle against his enemy, his battle axe, his weapon of war are men and women like yourself. If God is going to win his battle anywhere, it will be men and women that has become his weapon of war. Can you imagine that God needs to go to contend with his enemy at the gate? And they say, where is your weapon? And he said, Dr. Piet is my battle axe. Is the one I have determined to use to break the kingdom. They say, God, you said you are going to wage war against your enemies in the earth sector. What is the weapon that you want to use? What is the weapon that you want to use? Is that Mrs. Olushola? Is my weapon to overturn and to overrun the challenge 
in that hospital. They said there is a lot of confusion in that particular teaching hospital in Ghana. And God said, yes, I've seen it. I'm going to overthrow it and reset the place and reposition the place. He said, so by what will you do it? He said, my weapons are with me. Where are they? Not iron. Not weapons of, of metal. But man, he said, Professor Mensah is my is my weapon for that purpose. That's what is making this meeting critical. If to say God has another weapon with which to set things in order, to reposition things the way they should be, will have been looking anywhere else. But he say, you are my battle arms. But can I first ask, is it your interest as my dear brothers and sisters coming in our different professional groupings? Is it your interest to recognize and say, oh God, so it is with me you want to resettle things in the earth sector? So I am your battle axe. But one thing that is very exciting to me is that no axe uses itself by itself. Am I right? Eh? No matter how sharp an axe is, can an axe jump by itself and use itself to cut anything down? How does it come about? It must be used. But I hear God say, I will. I, the Lord, I will break kingdoms but with you. What would be your response to that? Will you say, oh God, while I am in this meeting, make me your battle axe. I don't know how Many, many years ago, I was praying. And I was asking God. I was asking God to do something in my generation. You know, we have read books. We have read about revivers. And sometimes I gave myself to just studying how revivers came how, how revivers moved, how things changed, how people's life were changed. But you see, after I've read all the stories of revival, there was always a matter that normally comes. I always see that God, all the big things he did, he uses men and women that were yielded to him. And I began to say, Oh, use me, Lord. Make me your battle axe. I'm sure maybe in the course of time you will sing that song. Make me your battle axe. Kept, Lord, in your quiver. Tried, trimmed, sharpened in your furnace. Meet for my master's use. I hope that song will be in your hymn. If it's not there, then I will need to teach you. I then discovered that all that I was expecting to happen in my generation, those days, God was saying, unless I get a battle axe. And my first response from that time until today, I said, Lord, make me your battle axe. Kept Lord in thy quiver, try trim sharp on in thy furnace, need for my man. 
just as you. I want to ask you, as you settle into this meeting, whether you are there in South Africa, and I've seen several people that were connecting from the UK, or you are in Ghana, or you are in, in any part of Africa, or any part of Nigeria, God is saying, I will, I will, I will, but with you. And I want to ask you as I pray, who among us? We say, oh God, since all you intend to do cannot be done without a man, a woman, who is your weapon of war, Lord, make me your weapon. I know you have prayed before. You have prayed, Lord, bless me. Lord, promote me. Lord, enlarge me. Lord, 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 increase me. Lord, 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 make me comfortable. You have prayed such prayers. There was a different case I'm asking you tonight. Can you say, Lord, make me your weapon of war. Make me your battle axe. Take me to battle. Take me to the battlefront. Take me to where you want to confront your enemy. Take me to where you need to gain victory over your adversary. Make me your battle axe. Make me your weapon, your weapon of war. I want you to remember that weapons of war, many, many times, they are not like reeds. They are not the things that bend. They are not the things that is, uh, you know, little, little wind is turning it around. Make me your weapon of war. I want to stop now and ask wherever you are, what will be your response? Are you saying, Lord, I don't just want to be a Christian. I don't just want to be blessed. I don't just want to say, yes, I'm enjoying. Make me a weapon, your weapon of war. Make me your battle axe. Make me a man, a woman that you can take to battle, to turn, to turn the captivity of your people around and to gain victory for your name. Make me your battle axe. Who is going to pray such a prayer? Who is going to say, Lord, enough of just talking generally? I have come into this meeting. I don't need to go back until you have torn me a weapon in your hand. A weapon to confront your enemy. A weapon. A weapon to subdue, to subjugate all that opposes you. Make me a weapon. Your weapon of war. Make me your battle axe. Who is going to join me to make that request? And who is going to say, oh God, whatever it will take that you will turn my life away from being a coward, from being the one that is just looking for soft landing, Not from those who just compromise. Not those who just want to hide in the crowd. 
not those who only speak inside, but they are not ready to be counted for God. Make me your weapon of war. Who will join me to pray that kind of prayer? I have been praying it for my years. It was my anthem for many years. Because the battle against the kingdom of God had been raging. I've seen it over the years. There was a time that the battle was so much that even when you go to church, church congregation, are you hearing me? It is the fraternity of bony members that are the preachers. Abba, it was terrible. It was terrible. They are not even afraid. They come into the sanctuary with their regalia. I had a pastor that when he's working in the community, is using the Ubuni rod to move about. And all church members were afraid of him. When he says, ah, everybody says, yes, sir. And some of us say, oh, God, we will confront him. We will confront him. Make me your weapon. And I remember how we dared him. And it was for once, the first time, he said, who are you to, who are you to confront me? We said, we confront you in the name of Jesus. And we knew from that moment, a battle line was drawn. I thank God that Jesus won the battle. The place was so hot. When he stands up to preach on the pulpit and he sees any of us, he will, he will become confused. The only thing he can say is that some people don't want me to succeed in this church. Some people are against me in this church. And as you're against me, I'm also against you. You will not make it. And it will cause us. And we'll stand and say, Amen. So you see these people, they are very stubborn. They are very stubborn. But we knew what we are dealing with. But I want to tell you, the battle we saw then is cheeky compared with the battle that has come. The battle that has now come. The compromise over what could deliver people. We have now come to a stage where it doesn't matter to those who are making drugs to put ordinary, ordinary chalk It doesn't matter to them. Even though we talk of Navdak, 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 you wonder how they escaped Navdak. Because all of that was compromised. And I'm asking, who in this meeting is saying, Lord, make me your battle us? And make me your weapon of war. And I'll give myself no rest. As long as you are willing with me to break. To break in pieces. You see, the language is not that of begging. Am I right? The language is confrontational. The language is not that of let's negotiate. The language is not that of, well, you know, let's just think, let's just be reasonable. No, I will break. That talks about a force. That talks about a battle. But God is saying, can you become my weapon? Can you become my weapon? So as so we pray together, I will request you to join me in prayer. I'm going to be on the altar first because as far as I'm concerned, that's what I want to be. If anybody thought I was already a battle ax in the hand of God, I want to be something much more. If anybody say, I believe you have tried, I want that person to know that the battle that has now come 
requires something more. I'm saying, Lord, make me your weapon of war. Let's call on God. But I want you to make a response to God. Would you like to say, oh God, make me your battle axe. Let's pray. Uh, you can sit down and be praying your prayer until you are ready to say, oh God, what else do I want to be in this life if I'm not your weapon of war? If you can't take me to the battle gate, what else? What do I want to be remembered for? Do I want to be a doctor that fizzled out in the midst of corruption? Will I be a nurse that watched Lives destroyed. And because I was afraid I would lose my salary, I kept quiet. Will I be a head worker? Will I be in the laboratory and see terrible things going on? But because I want to make money or I want to be part of something, I look away. Make me a battle axe. And let me hear you pray for yourself. Let me hear you take your response. Wherever you are, in whichever place God has allowed you to be, I've seen several of us, people in Makodi, people in Jaws, people have gathered in Elori, in Ibadan. I've seen people that have gathered in Abudu, it is time. I want to hear you talk to God for yourself. Make me a weapon of war in your hand. Not a reed. Not like ordinary banana. Make me your battle axe. And talk to God. Lift up your heart to God if you are sincerely saying, God, so this meeting is a battle cry. This meeting is a recruitment of God's battle axe who will reposition things. And I want you to know that repositioning things will be by force. It cannot be by negotiation. Make me your weapon of war. Permit me to request as you are standing before God, or you have been leaning before God, you will do one thing for me to know that yes, somebody is saying, oh God, not like banana, not like a reed that is bending the wind, make me a weapon. Oh, he said, you are my weapon of war. You are my battle axe. Ah! God, make me. I want to sing that song. But if you are lifting up your own right hand and say, God, for righteousness to prevail in healthcare delivery, make me your weapon of war. Make me your weapon of war. I will raise that song, and if you just desire to say, oh God, I've been going up and down, but I'm saying, Lord, I don't want to be a compromiser anymore. Make me your weapon of war. As I sing that song, you might raise your right hand where you are, wherever you are. And if there are things that have been a compromise, Fear has not allowed you to become anything for God. You have only been tagging along. Maybe you have even quietly, quietly succumbed to advances of sinners because you want just to be there. Oh my God, instead of being God's weapon, you have become a traitor. You are lifting up your right hand and said, Lord, make me your battle art.
get low in I quiva try dream sharp on your phone me for my master's use oh grace grace your grace alone is all i play for god bless you god bless you from Accra. god bless you to sunday all right lord Oh, grace to Lord. As a midwife, as a nurse, as a lab scientist, as a medical record specialist, as a doctor, as a physiotherapist, as a pharmacist, whatever your profession, God is looking for weapons of war, weapons of war. Where are you? Can you step out and say, God, make me, make me your weapon of war. Thank you. Just step out. God bless you. Just step out wherever you are. Just walk out. And I want you to do it deliberately. Just walk before God and say, today, everything that bends and bends me in and bends me over, the fear of what people are saying, the fear of how I'm going to survive and all of that, make me, make me your weapon of war. I cannot be an instrument to perpetuate evil. I cannot keep quiet when I see Satan ravaging. Lives are destroyed. Destinies are damaged. How will I be quiet? Make me, make me your battle axe. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Thank you, friends. Thank you. Thank you, dear sister. Maybe you did not know that stepping into the healthcare walk in whichever direction, God is asking for a weapon of war. There's a critical battle in that walk. Thank you, my friends. All those that need to make this kind of decision, I want you to step before God. Even in your center, even those of you that are just sitting, it is time now for you to stand up and say, God, make me a weapon, a weapon of war. A weapon, a weapon in your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Please pray. That everywhere, every leakage, every leakage, oh God, you've been traveling, you have been looking for those who will bring about a repositioning in the healthcare sector in all the dimension of it. Lord, we are hearing you saying, who, who, who will be my weapon? with which to do this work. God bless you. If you are anywhere, thank you, my brothers. Thank you, sisters. Thank you for all of you that are stepping out before God. We are praying. We are praying. The brothers and sisters from Latvia, we are praying for you. We are praying for those that stood out before God in Accra. Those that have stepped out before God in Boko. Those that have stepped out before God in Abudu. Wherever you are stepping out, God is recruiting weapons of war. You are not going to be instrument of his disgrace. Thank you. You are not going to be just there. There's something to change. There's a war to wage. I'm telling you, there's a war to wage. Can you imagine those that have gone into the production of drugs. See the kind of thing that is going on. And you are a pharmacist, you are so afraid to go and, and stand there and say, it will stop. Can you call on God tonight? Make me 
your battle axe. Make me your weapon of war. I can't see myself living and I see decay every day. I see souls perishing. I see lives damaged by my colleagues, by the system where we are working, and I'm afraid to talk about it. I see my fellow doctor destroying lives, destroying people because he wants to make money. And I'm keeping quiet and say, well, well, that's how he wanted it. No, make me your weapon of war. God bless you. Are there still some others whom God is calling? Please do so. Yes, we are praying. And as we are kneeling before God, God is going to visit you deliberately. Our Father, we thank you this evening that you have looked towards our direction. You have turned your attention to the health sector because of the cruciality of this particular aspect of human endeavor. We thank you that we are the ones you have involved in this work. And you have seen the kind of atrocities that are going on there. Father, we yield our lives to you, even as you are looking for weapons of war, battle axes that you want to use to subdue your enemy in this particular sector. So crucial is it in your hands, for oh Lord, we have seen it messed up by the enemy. Lord, as you have arisen, we are also responding to you, oh God, that as you are looking for somebody to use to bring transformation to the health sector, may you use us in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, look at your servants and your handmaids who are yielding their hearts unto you and say, Lord, use me. I pray that you will respond to our cry in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that we will not be alive and this sector will get rotten. Have mercy upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. If there be any of us that have compromised their Christian stand in this health sector, we ask, Lord, that you will please forgive us. We ought to be the light shining out of darkness. Oh Lord, many of us, our lights have grown dim. May you forgive us in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of us, maybe our hands are already stained with the blood of people. Where will you get the blood now to, to repay when God says their blood I will require from your hands? If you are there and your hands have been soiled, will you please confess to the Lord now? If you are there, you have compromised in one way or the other. As a doctor, you have killed, you have maimed just to collect money. You have done something damaging to people's lives. Please confess. A lab scientist, a lab technician, see the false results that you have given. You did not test that blood. You just wrote your own results. Will you please confess and say, Lord, forgive me. I've compromised. I've compromised. What I should do, I have not done. A nurse, a midwife, see the lives that have been damaged. Will you pray? A pharmacist, oh, infections that should not have resisted antibiotics, they have been resistant because you have lowered the standard. Lord, I'm sorry. I want to stand for you. Please forgive me and cleanse me. Commit your life to God that he will take you and he will save you. He will give you power to become a child of God indeed. Power to be a battle axe. Power to be able to stand uncompromisingly. Lord, Make me your child. Give me the power 
to be your child, to stand as a child of God in the health sector. Father, as we are looking up to you and crying from the depths of our hearts, asking for mercy, asking to be delivered from this compromise, answer our cry wherever we are in the name of Jesus Christ. Answer our cry, oh God, do something that will change our situation. Do something new that will give us the boldness to stand for you. For God has not given us the spirit of timidity to fear. He has given us the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Let that spirit descend upon your people. As many as are praying, we pray, oh God, there will be a difference. Something new will begin to happen in our lives. We will have boldness to stand for Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, as we are crying and we are responding to be your battle axe, there is something that you do to your battle axe that makes their forehead to be like bronze against that of the wicked. No matter how they knock, it will never hurt us. Lord, make us your battle axe. All the making that you want to do in our lives, help us to respond to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Every process that will make our foreheads like that of brass against the enemy, do it in us in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you because we know that you are speaking to us because you want to do something. We are trusting you, Lord, that we will not go away from this meeting the way we came. You will walk in our lives mightily in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. We are grateful that you are focused upon us for a purpose. And your purpose will not be damaged in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.